What's up, everybody? Welcome to Homegrown Habits. I'm Kyle. And I'm Emily. And today, we're making Montessori. Okay, but today we're not using any drills. Cut. Okay, so the reason we're making this series is my wife has been on me for the longest time about making some Montessori materials for our kids. Yes, yeah, so tonight we're gonna get started on the red and blue rods, which is one of the first math materials that you use in Montessori education. It's used for counting and um, later for measurements. So I'm really excited to get started. And it should be really simple, but it won't be. I'll find a way to make it hard. <laughs> You know, you can push. No, is that why that's there? I wondered why that pile of stuff was there. Stop! <laughs> okay, so in this episode, we're actually going to be using two separate methods. The mom method. And the dad method. And my way is super simple. It's easy. It's inexpensive. Yeah, it's also going to be really boring. It is not boring. Look at all this cool stuff. This is going to be a lot of fun. The dad method is going to be the best method. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. So to do the mom method, we've got some repurposed hardwood flooring, some zero vock paint in red and blue, and some painter's tape and sponge brushes. First, we need to pick out some pieces of flooring that are the right length to work with this project. Any scrap wood you have lying around should work. This just happens to be what we had on hand. Okay, so if you decide you're going to work with power tools, make sure you're always wearing the proper safety equipment. And if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing, make sure to get some help from somebody. We fed all the hardwood pieces we picked out through the planer to help remove the finish in the grooves. Then we used the table saw to remove the remaining tongue and groove. Here's a picture of the starting piece and the finished product. So after we finished cutting all the boards, we laid them out on a table so we could glue them together. Keep in mind this process can get pretty messy. I started out by using a squeeze bottle just to get a majority of the glue on the surface. After that I used a small piece of scrap wood just to spread it evenly over the board. Now we're good to glue all the boards together. Even with the limited amount of woodworking I've done, I've already discovered that you can never have too many clamps. We use the table saw to square up the edges and then cut the boards to 1 and 1 16th inch square rods. After that, we went ahead and planed down the board to 1 inch square rods. We purchased a 1 meter measuring stick to help mark the rods for cutting. So before we used the miter saw, I decided to install a backer block I made from an old 2x4. This would help prevent tear out on the rods, and it also provided a good edge to cut mark lines on. We used the miter saw to cut the rods into 10 different lengths that measured from 100 millimeters up to 1,000 millimeters. I loved how the rods turned out. I almost felt bad that we had to paint them. We started out painting the rods entirely red. I know we make this look really easy, so try not to get frustrated if you're not as experienced as us. Project, I'm Oops. Really... Ah, I hate this! See? Easy peasy. After the rods were painted red, we taped them off so we could add the blue stripes.
I really love the color blue that we chose. It was so exciting taking that tape off. The finished product is absolutely awesome. So unfortunately, I taped some of the rods wrong and we ended up with two blue ends. We had to repaint all of those rods and retape them. But in the end, we were really happy with the results. Next up, it's Dad's turn. So for my project, I picked out a big fat slab of maple because I saw another guy use maple once. I've also got some non-toxic water-based dye, some de-wax shellac, and a food safe salad bowl finish. Since the hunk of maple we're using is so thick, we decided to cut it in two passes. I didn't know it at the time, but the burn you see on the wood is caused because the blade we were using wasn't sharp enough. If you're going to cut wood with a table saw, make sure you've got a good sharp blade on it. One more cut to give us one and one sixteenth inch square rods. Then we'll make one more trip over to the planer to clean off the burn marks, and then we can start sanding. Since I'm going to be dyeing my rods, it's important that we get a really nice finish on the boards. I did this using a random orbit sander and a 180 grit pad. I want to go over the rods one last time with 220 grit sandpaper, but before I do, since we're using a water-based dye, I need to wet the rod so I can raise the grain. This will prevent it from having a rough surface after we're done. Now that the sanding's all done, we can mark the boards and cut to length. Here's a method for taping the rods that I wanted to show you just in case you don't have an extra set of hands. This is where things get fun. I applied one coat of dye to each of the rods on every side. Then I let them sit for at least four hours before applying another coat. I repeated this process four times before I got the color I wanted. The ends of these rods are very much like a sponge, so I only had to apply one coat of dye to get the same color as the sides. The second time I taped my rods, I didn't even have to use the meter stick. I just used the red dye as a template. I can't begin to tell you how nervous I was removing the tape here. If any of the blue dye had bled under the tape, it would have ruined the rods. Fortunately, they came out fantastic. The little specks of white you see on the rods is just a little bit of glue left behind by the tape. Those were easy to rub off. After giving the dye about two days to dry, I went ahead and sealed all the colors in with a thin layer of de-wax shellac. The final step involved bringing all the rods inside and putting a layer of salad bowl finish on every surface. I could only do two sides at a time with this process. Then I had to allow the rods to dry for 12 hours before doing the other two sides, and then another 12 hours before sanding. Each layer of finish took a minimum of 24 hours to cure. I went ahead and used a box fan to try and speed up the process. After that I did a wet sand with 400 grit sandpaper, wiped the surface clean, repeated the process with fine grade steel wool, and then wiped the surface one more time. I added three more layers of finish and each time I sanded it with a finer grit sandpaper. The entire process of finishing these rods took about a week. I know this seems like a lot of effort just to make some red and blue rods, but I'm really happy with the results I got, and I learned a lot along the way. What's really cool about the dyeing method is that whenever you're done, each side of the rod is completely unique. It's amazing to see how the wood grain varies between each surface of a single piece. To be honest, the rods aren't perfect. If you look close enough, you can see some pits on the surface. This is probably because the blades we use weren't sharp enough when we first cut the rods. All in all, it's not a bad month's work. 
Okay, so this is it. These are our finished rods. We did an entire video as far as mom versus dad goes. Um, it was probably a little too close to call. Both rods had their pros and cons, so... I agree. Uh, mine were definitely easier to make and less expensive, but yours are gorgeous. Just a lot of extra work went it, into them. It was. It was a lot of work. Um, regardless of which one you think's better, which one we think's better, we had a lot of fun making the rods. We hope you had a lot of fun watching it, and just remember, we're new at this, so we're kind of getting spun up. There's a lot of things we're trying to figure out, so we're going to bring you content as often as we can. Just don't expect it too fast. So. And remember that we are not professionals. <laughs> we don't do this for a living, so yeah. offer us some um, constructive criticism and be gentle, please. Yeah, yeah. and if you have any suggestions, anything you want to see us make in the future, we're absolutely open to that, yeah. and um, I think we're good. Yeah. We'll Don't see forget you guys to next subscribe. Time.